Well, hello to my Sunday school friends. It is good to see you. I have for you today a story that is almost all happiness. We've had some sad stories and we're going to have to remember a little bit of sadness in order to understand the story, but you've already heard the sad parts. Today, it's just a happy story about someone remembering their promises and someone doing the right thing. So if you remember, David, the new king of Israel, had a friend, Jonathan, Saul's son. Saul was the last king of Israel. And David and Jonathan loved each other. They were bestest friends and they made promises to each other that they would always take care of each other and that if anything happened to either one of them, the other one would take care of the other's family. It was a lovely promise. And you remember that Jonathan did have a family. And here's where we have to touch on the sad stuff. You remember that there was a day when Jonathan kissed his family goodbye and went off to war with his brothers and his father Saul, and they never came home. That they were killed that day in a battle with the Philistines. Right? The little boy that Jonathan kissed was named Mephibosheth. That's a very long name, isn't it? Mephibosheth. Right? So Mephibosheth was a, just a little boy, five years old, when his daddy went off to war and didn't come home. And when the people in Jonathan's house learned that King Saul and Jonathan and the two other brothers had been killed, they panicked. They thought that their enemies would come and try to kill the rest of them. And so they began immediately packing things up and they all scattered. The servants ran away. Everyone who was connected ran away. Everyone tried to get away. And Mephibosheth, this little boy, this five-year-old boy, he doesn't know what's going on at all. He can't figure it out. His nurse picks him up, his, his baby sitter picks him up and she's running with him to try to escape this whatever might come they don't know who's gonna to try to hurt them but they're afraid someone's gonna to try to hurt them so the nurse is running with this little boy and she stumbles and she falls and she crushes his legs and they never heal right I mean this was a long time ago before there were surgeries or specialized doctors or braces or physical therapists to make things better to help people regain full use of damaged arms and legs Mephibosheth was just damaged for the rest of his life he couldn't walk right he couldn't do anything right his legs were bent and his feet were bent and and he was in real real trouble and he wound up uh, being taken across the Jordan River he wound up living uh, across the Jordan River outside of David's reign afraid that something would happen to him that David would find out about him that David would come and finish him off you know that 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 he would be hurt someday so he had this small painful, scary life. Well, David, you know, we've talked about, uh, wound up making Jerusalem his capital city and driving out the Jebusites and driving out the rest of the armies uh, and the enemies of Israel. And David consolidated his power. It means he put his power together and he became very rich and very powerful. And then David remembered his promise to Jonathan. And he asked, there was, at the palace, there was an old man, his name was Ziba, and he had once been Saul's servant. And David called Ziba to him and he said to him, are there any of Saul's descendants still alive? Are there any of Jonathan's family still alive? And Ziba thought about it and he said, well, yes, Jonathan has a son that's still alive. His name is Mephibosheth. He lives across the Jordan. David immediately sent messengers to Mephibosheth. Come to me. Mephibosheth was scared to death. He thought that David was going to kill him. He thought that David was going to hurt him in some way. But you don't disobey the king. And so he went to see David. And when he came into the presence of David, he knelt down on the ground and he said to David, here I am, I'm your servant. And David was so glad to see Jonathan's son. He went to him and he threw his arms around him and he said, don't be afraid of me, Mephibosheth. I will never hurt you. I loved your father and I want to take care of you. I'm going to do a few things for you. I'm going to give you back all of your grandfather's land, King Saul's land. Ziba, 
is going to is going to manage them for you to take care of them for you you can live on those lands or you can stay here in the palace with me and you can eat at my table and i will always take care of you oh mephibosheth couldn't believe his luck so he, he sent back to his house and he had his wife and his little son come to Jerusalem to live. And for Jonathan's sake, David took care of Mephibosheth for the rest of his life. It's important to keep our promises. It's important for us to show grace and love to people who are vulnerable, people who need us. And we learn all of that remembering this story about David and the little lame prince Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. You take care of yourself, work hard, struggle to obey God and your parents, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.